Have you ever had a conversation with a friend and the next time you checked your phone, you saw ads for the very thing you discussed? Social media platforms track your location, your buying habits, and even the locations of the people you interact with in order to manipulate you to spend your money, which is outrageously sinister, isn't it? Except, no, not if you think about it. It's actually pretty cool. Most people are too busy being outraged by what they consume online to realize that they are falling prey to a different kind of manipulation. We're so quick to blame social media algorithms and tech figures like Mark Zuckerberg for manipulating us, but the truth is algorithms are just reflecting our own behavior what we're drawn to, what gets us to click and to follow. Social media algorithms don't create behavior. They only reveal our behavior. And what's more, successful content creators have figured out how these patterns work. They're the ones who are truly manipulating you. For instance, a fellow NLP teacher and friend of mine posted a tweet on his Facebook page from someone named Robert G. Reeve. Reeve explained in a series of tweets how social media platforms track you by describing a situation where he had visited his mother, used her toothpaste because he was at her place overnight, liked it, and returned home thinking about buying that same toothpaste, only to suddenly see ads on Twitter for that exact same toothpaste. It couldn't be that his phone or any device was listening to him. He had never had a conversation with his mother about the toothpaste. So how could this be? His theory is that the GPS on his phone was matched with his mother's home, connected his buying habits with her buying habits through purchases they both make online, and then started putting ads in front of him of the products he likely came into contact with at his mother's home. Reeve goes on to say, that this is an invasion of your privacy and that businesses are using your data against you. Right. Except, how exactly is your data being used against you? Reeve never explains this. He doesn't have to though, because by this point, you're too outraged to care. What was presupposed in my friend's sharing of this post by Reeve is the outrage the how dare you, the who do they think they are, the feeling of being violated by this clandestine intrusion and the desire to share this information with everyone so the vulnerable and manipulated now have a fighting chance. I posted a comment on my friend's post publicly with all the outraged onlookers watching. I asked, what's wrong with this? How is this an invasion of privacy? When I buy items at a grocery store, the person ringing me up knows exactly what I'm buying and they know my exact location. So how is this really any different? The same thing happens if a door-to-door -door salesman comes to my home or someone tries to sell me something on the street, which is common and way more intrusive. Instead of my data being used against me, it sounds like businesses are working very hard to put ads in front of me for products that might actually be relevant to me. Products I will likely want, instead of throwing a bunch of random ads at me. Also, seeing ads doesn't mean I have to buy what's in the ads. It's not like you lose all self-control just because you see an ad. <laughs> One argument someone made against me was that businesses are just trying to separate you from your money. We are trying to separate ourselves from our money. What good is money if we don't use it to buy products and services that bring value to our lives. Except for retirement and an emergency fund, money is absolutely useless if we just hold on to it. Now, I can't know for sure what Robert G. Reeves' intentions are. Was he trying to manipulate people with his tweets? I don't know. Regardless though, he was very, very successful in manipulating people to share his tweets, block ads, and feel even more indignant about social media and marketing. Why did Reeves' tweets work so well? Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Everywhere in social media, especially from some of the most successful content creators out there. Here's how it works. The first part of this is Reeve created outrage. Nothing gets attention better than outrage, not even cat videos. Outrage hooks people every time. But that doesn't mean you're automatically going to be outraged every time you see something on the internet. Reeve had to establish credibility up front, and he did that by saying he's in tech. So the reader feels like they're getting insider information, a secret 
you're not supposed to know. He also says that it's only a conspiracy theory that your devices, like your phone, are listening to you. So debunking a conspiracy theory adds more credibility by letting you know he's not some crazy off the wall conspiracy theorist. So what he's about to tell you is absolutely true. Now that you feel like you can trust what he's about to tell you, he drops the outrage bomb. Social media platforms are tracking you and anyone you come into contact with and they're using it against you. Which like I already said, is only partly true. And the part that is true only makes life more convenient. The second part of the manipulation is to make you feel helpless. Now that you feel violated by ads for things that you are likely to actually want, what is one to do? Immediately, you want to know more. Reeve tells you to block those ads, but of course, this can't possibly be enough to relieve the outrage you're experiencing. After all, they're tracking you and hunting you down to separate you from your money. You follow Reeve on Twitter, of course, and await more information to learn how to protect yourself because you now feel vulnerable. But the truth is, you're never more vulnerable and you're never easier to manipulate than when you feel both outrage and helplessness. And this is the understanding you need in order to truly protect yourself from manipulation, whether it's online manipulation or someone you know who's trying to manipulate you. Stop allowing feelings like outrage and helplessness to hijack your mind. So how do you do this? Perspective. One of the great things about living in modern times is the choices we have. When I used to watch TV, I had to watch commercials that split up the TV shows I watched. The commercials weren't interesting and it rarely showed anything that I actually wanted. On social media though, ads seem to read your mind about what you want. And though it can be a bit strange, you have to admit, it's terribly convenient. And if you don't like the ads you're seeing, you can just remove them. So instead of equating something that is relatively harmless, like data collection on your buying habits as an outrageous intrusion on your privacy, see it for what it is. At the very worst, it's slightly annoying. And at best, it probably saves you time and money. It's less dramatic, I know, but sometimes the truth is not very dramatic. Instead of seeing a platform like Facebook as a horrible tool that's trying to hijack human behavior and make the world a worse place, see it for what it is. It's a business. Change your behavior and their business will have to change. The key understanding here is that you have choice. You can see yourself as a victim and blame others for your choices, which only makes you more susceptible to manipulation, or you can take responsibility for your choices, therefore taking control of the information you consume and overall taking control of your life. If you constantly consume information that makes you feel outraged and helpless at the same time, what kind of choices do you think you'll make as a result? And how will those choices affect the quality of your life? Versus consuming information that empowers you and uplifts you. Now, could data collection be used for bad? Of course it could. Just like neuro-linguistic programming, which is what I teach, anything that works and is extremely effective can be used for negative purposes. But until we rid the world of everything that's bad, People who do bad will continue to exist. Staying in a heightened state of outrage and helplessness isn't going to change that, nor will it protect you from manipulation. Quite the opposite. So how do we protect ourselves from being manipulated? There was a period of time when I had consecutive relationships with women who were constantly trying to manipulate me. Because I didn't understand what was happening, it actually often worked. After this happened several times, I started to think that perhaps all women were like this. Rather than owning my choices and holding myself responsible, I could have reacted by blaming all women for my experiences and I could have justified treating women poorly in the name of fighting back and giving them back what they deserve. Instead of thinking it was all women who do this, I decided instead that it was likely just a small segment of women who behave like this. Not only that, there must be something I'm doing that is attracting this type of woman, and I have to take responsibility for that. I was no longer blinded by an ignorant and harsh generalization about women. Suddenly, it became much easier to differentiate between women who were like that and women who weren't. This also made it easy to spot these passive aggressive techniques early on and not date those women. The hard part about this is that it's difficult when you have vulnerabilities and someone who knows how to exploit those vulnerabilities comes into your presence 
and tells you what you want to hear. The same goes for social media. If your worldview is that the world is out to get you, you are highly susceptible to being manipulated by people whose posts align with that worldview, which will make it easy for them to manipulate you once they've got you feeling outraged and helpless. You have a choice. Continue descending down a wormhole of outrage and helplessness, causing you to perceive the world as a hostile place, which will only make you feel more like a victim, or you can take control of your attention and the information you consume to create the life you want to live. Take full responsibility for your feelings and your decisions. No one can manipulate you unless you let them. Maybe they get you once, but when you understand how you're being manipulated, especially after watching this video, you'll start taking responsibility for your actions instead of blaming others. Now you know something you didn't know before watching this video. What you do next with this understanding is what matters most. If you just move on, forget what you've learned here, and fall back into the same routines you're likely to fall prey to manipulation again and again. Protect yourself by creating a stronger sense of self. Your beliefs about yourself, like your worthiness and your deservingness, control the beliefs you have about the world, like how you can find success and live a fulfilling life. If you feel like you're not getting everything you want out of life, you will definitely want to watch this next video where I show you how to live a life that doesn't suck.